Hello everyone. This is Jen O'Ryan, your self-love life coach. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Self Love You, where we talk about learning to love yourself, learning all the reasons why you can't see yourself or who you really are, and working on your own inner issues. That's what we do here. We do that. We literally go there. We help ourselves out of situations and help ourselves rise and become the most productive, happy, healthy, and well-adjusted people we can possibly be. Welcome to the channel. Today's topic is going to be on healthy narcissism. Healthy narcissism. I know nobody's talking about healthy narcissism. We see a lot of videos, a lot of audios, a lot of content discussing what's unhealthy. And there's a place for that. There's a place to talk about all the unhealthiness that's going on around us, especially as we're coming out of the fog and realizing that we have emotional pain and it's not our fault. And we begin looking externally to seeing what's going on in our lives and what our lives are manifesting and how maybe it has to do with some of the people around us that are treating us poorly or some of the toxic relationships and toxic behaviors of others. It's important to be able to notice what is going on as you wake up and become an adult and begin to really start to work on what's within. But a lot of the the content, like I say, is not focused on healthy narcissism. And I think it's a very sad thing because there's so many people who are misinformed. The, you know, if you are a novice on this topic and you haven't done your inner healing work and you haven't even begun the process, you might pick up a video or pick up some content and you might run with it. Okay, you might run all the way, you know, off the sides of the earth with with whatever content you pick up, not realizing that there are volumes that could be written and discovered on the topic of narcissism. Before I get more much deeper, I also want to welcome all of the self lovies to the channel. I want to welcome all of you to the channel and I want to say, hey, what's going on? I hope you're having a beautiful day and I hope that your journey is really progressing and I love you guys and I'm so glad that you visit and I'm so glad when you um, subscribe, like, and share and, and really get the healing that you deserve through some of the topics that we discuss. So today we're talking about healthy narcissism. Those of you who are just coming into this topic may think you know it all from one video, but if you do not understand the whole concept of how narcissism develops and why and what it really is, then you're going to make you're going to you're going to miss your target. You're going to start your mind is going to start telling you that things are a certain way when that's really not what's going on. Like everybody you see becomes a narcissist and it's a really overused term. Like, you know, oh, you tick me off. You're a narcissist. Oh, you look in the mirror. You're a narcissist. Oh, you took a selfie. You're a narcissist. Okay. And it's like this overused label. I remember when I first started figuring out about narcissism, and I was, you know, one of the first people to talk about it on YouTube, believe it or not. But I remember when I first found out about it, I was like, why are, you know, and I was in therapy at the time and I was like, why isn't anybody talking? Why doesn't the therapist know about narcissism? Because they didn't seem to know, but I had to figure it out. I had to read books after books after books and study. I did a lot of study of Sam Vatkin's work. He was the original narcissist slayer here on the web, but that was before YouTube was really in play. So Sam Vatkin, he was the original, you know, he was the original, he's a, a self-professed narcissist who is very 
very insightful into the, um, you know, maladaptive, not maladaptive, malignant narcissism. He is really, really in the know. And he's the person that I studied and studied for like three years before I even started talking about it. Anyway, so if you come in, I would go to different, I would go to a therapist and I would be like, why aren't they even talking? Why aren't they even saying narcissist? You know, I'm here I am with all my being wanting to label this. I really want to put a label on it because it's this behavior and it seems to be a pattern. And whenever I'm able to label it, I feel so much better. And I'm getting relief because I'm seeing that it's not me, that it wasn't me, and that there's actually an explanation. And yes, this really is happening to me. And it felt so good to label. It felt so good to find a label and really to project and say, that's who they are. That's why. And I didn't understand why that wasn't part of the therapeutic process that I'd ever experienced because somebody else could have figured this out for me a long time ago. Since that time, I've done a lot of personal development. I've done a lot of healing and inner work. And now I understand why when you go to a therapist, as a general rule, they do not label other people. Now, nowadays, some therapists actually are getting into the groove of, of labeling. But in my opinion, that is a mistake. Because labeling others in your life all around you can lead to some slippery slopes. And, you know, imagine I am saying this. Like, I have so many videos on YouTube about narcissists and what they can do to you. And I think those are all very valuable because there is an affliction called malignant narcissism. And not every person is going to understand what it is because it does not impact someone who is guarded against it. So someone who has a healthy upbringing and has been validated and has boundaries, they're going to be much less inclined to be prey for a narcissist. They're not going to be narcissistic prey. So we have a whole segment of society who don't understand what narcissism is, what malignant narcissist is. And so they just either label everything as narcissist or they don't understand. They don't understand how somebody could, you know, be prey, become addicted to a narcissist, allow someone to do these things. And they may even believe the narcissist who has one face, the Janus face, one face that's kind to the public and then at home in behind closed doors or covertly they are backstabbing. So that's the whole, you know, that's the whole scheme of it. But here's the deal, folks. Narcissism is not negative. Just plain old narcissism. If you didn't, there, it, it's a spectrum, okay? Too much of a good thing is not a good thing when it comes to self-love, right? Over, over, overdoing it is a problem, Overfocus on yourself at the expense of others. Try it. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, so there's healthy narcissism. It's in the middle. And then on the far left is somebody who has zero self-esteem. Okay, that could be, some people could think of that as codependency. You know, borderline, all that cluster be all along this, this line. And then you can get to a healthy place right in the middle, where you have a healthy sense of self-regard. You love yourself. You respect yourself. You can put on an outfit and think you look beautiful or handsome. You can, you have confidence. You have assertion. You know you can do what needs to be done. Then we start creeping up on the right side, okay? So narcissism in and of itself is not negative, bad. It's not a bad word. Just because someone looks at themselves in the mirror and takes selfies 
or tries to look pretty or says the word I in a speech or talks about themselves or, or you know, you can't diagnose someone by those factors. The narcissist behaviors that we complain about, those of us empaths who have dealt with these behaviors, those behaviors are called malignant narcissism. That's on the far end on the right of the spectrum. Let's just say the right. I mean, you know, say it's on the other far end. Well, on the very far end is the psychopath. So somewhere in there is a sociopath, psychopath, but on the close to those is the narcissist, okay? Based upon my research, this is all, I'm not, I'm not a therapist. This is just my research that I've done myself online and reading just because it's quite intriguing if you ask me. But once you know it, you know it. Okay, so on that far end, the narcissist, the malignant narcissist, okay? A malignant narcissist has certain behavior patterns, that are harmful to people who are on the other far left. So the far left are pretty much like inverse narcissists. They're like, you know, hurt me, hurt me. They're masochists. Whereas on the far right, the, the narcissist is the sadist. Sadomasochism, right? So somebody that wants to be hurt is over here. They may not know they want to be hurt, but subconscious is a lot more than conscious. Okay, so the narcissist on the right, you have, you know, according to some YouTube, fabulous YouTubers, there's different levels within the narcissist, malignant narcissism range. And so I'm not going to go into all of that because I haven't really, I haven't really dissected it that well, but I can kind of, I get the, the concept. A malignant narcissist is somebody who will literally use others in order to feel okay. A malignant narcissist is someone who is going to try to harm others. They're going to daily, regularly use other people's emotions as a gauge to whether or not they exist because they don't exist to themselves. They don't have a sense of self. So they have to get their feelings of feeling good by literally going out and harming others. They do all sorts of, of funky things. They they go out and they cause they ca they they they're energy vampires. So they'll cause negativity to happen in their prey. And you know they have primary sources of supply, and they have secondary sources of supply, according to Sam Backen, where they have the one person in their life that they're just draining, completely draining. And that one person is just giving them all of their emotional reaction. And that one person in their life is the reactor and they get to play the good person and they're doing nothing but causing, push, pushing the buttons of the reactor. The malignant narcissist is fed. It, it has, the, um, they have a need for this emotional reactivity of others and they fiend for it and they've got to have it. And they love the control that they garner by doing things to other people that causes that person to be in pain or to be questioning who they are or giving them, you know, a bunch of accolades, whatever it is, they want to control the emotions of others. They scheme, they plot, they figure out ways to get this supply. They play games, they position people, they treat one person one way and another person another way. They, they create um, entanglements. They do all sorts of very wicked and nefarious things. Sometimes this is a subconscious process. And then with other levels of narcissists, from what I understand, it's, they actually know exactly what they're doing. They may not know that they're addicts for, for narcissistic supply, but they are. So someone who has healthy narcissism does not try to get their supply from other people. They don't go out and harm people. They don't try to get, they don't get in, like somebody who has healthy narcissism is not going to sit there for the most part and engage in a bunch of meaningless games. They're not going to play a bunch of games. 
They might, you know, get caught up in things now and again, but the true malignant narcissist lives for the game. They create the game. They are like a reality TV show in their own mind. They, if there's drama, they're on it. They are on that drama. They want to be a part of the drama. They will gossip um, just for fun. They call people up to gossip. They talk bad about other people. They put other people down. They're constantly trying to get attention. And the attention that they're trying to get is an individual. So this could show up as somebody who's taken who t has a selfie online. Yeah, just because you have a selfie online doesn't mean you're in a, a malignant narcissist and it doesn't mean you're a, a codependent. You know, those kinds of activities certain that's not where it's at if you're trying to figure this out, okay? If you're new to this. That's not what it is. There's healthy narcissism. Every child goes through a developmental phase and every child like I think around 2 to 3 years old is a narcissist. Everything focuses on them. And anything that, they, if they don't get their way, they throw a fit. And a malignant narcissist is a gigantic child in, a, in a, an adult's body. They throw fits. They rage. They rage if they don't get their way. And they cause drama constantly. They want to always pull the entire drama scenario in on themselves. Someone who is not a narcissist is going to get the heck out of the drama. Okay? They're going to get out. If you're not if you if you're not getting anything out of it, if you're not getting fed, you don't want to be in the drama. You're like, "Okay, that drama, I got to get out." And then if you don't know no really know what's going on, you may get sucked into the drama. And But after a while, you learn, wait a minute, what is this? And then you learn to go no contact, and you learn to live without it. And you go, oh my gosh, I can live without that drama? I thought I had to be in that drama. So there's different levels of all of these things, but there is something, okay, so every child goes through the phase, okay? And if you don't make it out of the phase, you stay stuck as a three-year-old, Okay? That's a developmental milestone. And the according to scientists, some people stay a stay in that narcissist phase because they were neglected. Neglect can cause it. Neglect without, you know, it just depends on it's like, you know, it's like a stew. It's like you nature versus nurture. You have to well, it's this is learned behavior, okay? If you are neglected, if you are neglected and no one mirrors you properly and you don't get it, then you may stay stuck in that phase. Okay, it's a cluster B. It's all in the same plane here. You may stay stuck in a narcissistic phase and you can't see outside of yourself. And everything revolves around you and you have that myopic view and you can't, you can't see beyond yourself. Or you can also become a narcissist if you are overindulged. If your parents do not require that you experience the consequences of your actions and they treat you like a little god. And parents do that when you spoil your child and refuse to give um, direction and refuse to give discipline, you can actually create your own little narcissist who grows up to be a big narcissist and terrorizes a bunch of people. I don't really know about how psychopaths are formed. I would just assume that that's a brain thing. Like, that's just my assumption. I don't know for sure. And I really haven't had a problem with that segment of society. You know, that's very easy to see when someone has psychopathic tendencies, very cold and calculated and callous and mean. But for me, the narcissism really was something that I had to learn about because I was being abused by that malignant narcissist in my life. So I had to figure it all out and I had to go backwards and I had to untangle and realize what is this? So the, the point that I'm making in this video or audio is that there's a healthy form of narcissism where you respect yourself and you love yourself and you don't go after drama once you know what's going on. 
you or you try you try to get away from drama. You don't start drama. Okay, if you have healthy narcissism, you don't need other people to. You don't need to feed off the emotions of others. You don't try to cause other people pain. You don't try to cause other people to do things. You just live your life and you just focus on your life and your family and what's around you and staying away from, you know, people that are bad. That has nothing really to do with narcissism, but that does have to do with the healthy attitude in general. Um, part of having a healthy attitude in general and, and feeling good about yourself requires that you have some semblance of narcissism. It's in all the books. It's a developmental stage. And it's okay for someone to love themselves. And it's okay for someone to, to enjoy life and feel great. It's not okay to label every single person. If you see one behavior, it's not okay to label them. And I think that's a dangerous, slippery slope. Because if you get stuck in that in that zone. And for a while I went through the zone where I was discovering what narcissism is. And I just started noticing it everywhere, (laughs) you know, everywhere I went and really focusing on external, like those people over there are doing this. Oh, I see what they're doing. And then, you know, like anything in healing, um, there's a pendulum, you know, you go overboard, Okay, so you can go overboard in labeling everyone around you. You're wrong. You know, just because you think it doesn't mean it's always true. Okay, as a general rule, you know, a narcissist isn't insightful. A narcissist can't, doesn't have insight. They do not do the inner work. Okay, what does a narcissist do? A narcissist blames other people for everything. They use the DARVO method, which is, I can't remember all what the acronym, but look it up. It's DARVO. It's where they they blame others and then attack the other, whoever they're harming. It's just, it's a mess. We should do an audio on that. But that's what narcissists do. They don't take responsibility for their own behavior. And so... As a healthy person, you should be living your merry life and not focused on what other negative people are doing. If someone behaves in a way that you feel uncomfortable with, you can make a note of that mentally and go, okay, that's not healthy. And, you know, but that doesn't make that person, that doesn't mean I'm a psychiatrist now where I can diagnose this person. That just means that you've noticed something and you don't have to go and tell the world that that person, label that person because you don't know where that person is. And guess what? That person is none of your business. You're you're put on this earth to handle your yard. You're responsible for your yard. And labeling someone really limits you in a tremendous way. Because there may be some people in your life that you need that may be narcissists, but you don't have to let them in your yard. But they may be helpful. They may offer, you know, promotion opportunities in the future. Or, you know, they may be in a charity. Or they may have a position in government. Or something that is, you know, not every narcissist deserves to be tarred and feathered. Even malignant. As long as they're not messing with you. As long as you have boundaries to keep you away from the narcissist, they'll pretty much leave you alone unless they smell, you know, that you're prey. If they, if they pick up that you're going to be prey and you're going to supply them with their emotional reactivity that they need to feel like whole people for however long they need to use you, then you're going, they're going to come back and they're going to keep coming back to you. And they're never going to go away. And they're going to hover you. If they need you, if there's something they need from you, they are going to hover you. And they may go away for a while, but they'll always leave that door open. Like if you want to, you know, no matter what, they'll always leave a door open. Whereas people in general who are healthy are going to be like, if, if you have a relationship bust up and, you know, things are really toxic, you don't necessarily, you know, you're not open to going back there because you're growing and learning. 
Whereas a malignant narcissist will always be around to let you allow them to control you with their antics. There's much to be said about narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, and it is a true disorder. And it, I believe what I've learned is there are people that are more attracted to that people with that personality disorder than others. And you have to learn to guard your heart and protect yourself and learn to go no contact and get out of the narcissist way so that the narcissist can go bother someone else because it's really not your job to take care of everyone else other than maybe to make people aware in general, like what I'm doing right now, you know, this is healing. It, it heals me to help others. It's something that makes me feel good, but you know, narcissism in and of itself, it's okay to love yourself. It's okay to have healthy self-esteem. It becomes a problem when you are trying to do things. You're trying to manipulate other people. You're trying to get your needs met by manipulating other people. That's that's a, a true malignant narcissist. And that's when it's on the other, the right far spectrum. And those are the people you don't want to get close to. You may want to know them, but you don't want to let them in your close circle. You want, you know, we have to have compassion for every person. We're called to love one another. And if you want to walk around calling other people names and just being bitter and having resentment, every day and labeling people and feeling like a big wig because now you know how to label. Well, in the, at the end of the day, that's going to harm you because it's going to limit your resources. The best place to be is knowing how to handle yourself in the presence of a narcissist and knowing how to block the attacks of said type of person by staying out of their way, by distancing yourself, by noticing behaviors and taking action to protect yourself, by holding your body in a certain way so that you're not in the in the target of their energetic prowess, you know, by you know, that depends if you're like married to a narcissist and you've gone through divorce and you have to see them, then you want to hold your body in a certain way that doesn't open yourself up to attack. These people attack. They are on the offense. They're not on the defense. A narcissist is out attacking daily. They're harming and attacking and relishing in this. Now, I, I'm kind of, you may think I'm talking out of both sides. On one respect, I'm saying a narcissist is this and this and this. And then on another respect, I'm saying, but don't label. And that's, you know, that's the point is, that there are narcissists out there, but we don't have to start labeling people, okay? Labeling them as such and, and putting them, um, you know, that's splitting. It's just, it's just like a narcissist. A narcissist is stuck in the splitting phase, in the all or nothing, the black or white phase, where I either love you to, to pieces or I hate your guts. Okay, that's the cluster B dilemma, right? So you don't want to be like that. You want to have gray area. You want to know that some people may have issues. I don't really need to label their issues because I'm too busy enjoying my beautiful life. I'm too busy focused on building my life, building my, my stuff. I'm happy in my own life. I'm feeding those people I love around me with love and they feed me back with love and there's a reciprocity and I don't have time to go around and label. There may be a phase you have to go through where you label, 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 label so that you can understand what's going on, but you've got to come out of that. It, there's an end. There's a place where you no longer have to label. You just say, yep, yeah, that's Jim. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of note, okay, noted, noted. I've got, you know, this is where I'm not going to be able to relate. And so I'm going to go ahead and close down that opening that I may have so that I don't get hurt because you will get hurt by certain people. But do we have to label everybody all the time? 
and then everybody, and then, you know, once everybody becomes a narcissist and you're not really delineating between what that is and defining it properly, then everybody's a narcissist and the, and the word loses its, uh, you can't really understand what it means anymore because you're just calling everybody that. And so remember that the malignant narcissist is going to be looking and seeking for prey. They're going to be manipulating. They're going to be using the con tactics, the con artist strategies like love bombing, the fraudulent, acting fraudulent in order to get someone to let down their defenses, let down their guard, let them in. And then once they are allowed into that person's life, then they're going to keep them there and hurt them over and over again emotionally and keep them in an emotional place of back and forth and, and tricking them and letting, you know, oh, hoovering them and coming back and, and just unable to let go. And because they don't want to let you go because they want to use you because your reaction actually gives them a sense of self because they don't have a sense of self. So there's, you know, on the codependency side, there's a lack of a sense of self as well. But it's on the on the narcissist side as well. So you want to have a healthy sense of self, a healthy sense of confidence. You know who you are. You know, okay, I don't really have so much time to focus on who they are. Because if you stare into the abyss, what happens, you know? You become the abyss. That's kind of funny, based upon my last video, my last audio. You know, if you if you if you look at negative people's behavior and you begin labeling them, then what are you doing? What are you doing ultimately? Ultimately, you're coming out of your own reality. You're abandoning your own existence because all you really need to do with a malignant narcissist is go no contact or distance and step back and protect yourself and make sure you have healthy people in your life. You don't really need to go and tell them off and, you know, tell everybody that they are one because really does it, what is that? What good does that do? It doesn't do you any good. It's good to know behaviors that are toxic to you and dangerous that you're prone to falling for. And it's good to stay aware and it's good to, but I don't think it's good to label people. I don't know. Maybe I'm conflicted. But for whatever reason, I decided to do this audio about healthy narcissism just to highlight the fact that there are levels and, and that there are places that it can go where it becomes an addiction for the narcissist to be fed with the pain of others or the attention and adulation of others. Now, is it okay to want attention? Yeah, attention is a natural desire. It's natural to want connection and affirmation and to be lauded and appreciated for your talents and your gifts. That does not mean you're a malignant narcissist. Just because you're good at singing and you love to sing and you enjoy the applause, that doesn't make you a malignant narcissist. It could make you more narcissistic, you know, like they have that, the, the, the narcissism where it's because you're famous and, you know, you're like a famous pop star and you, you get narcissism in that way. I mean, that can happen, but not even that means you're malignant, like where you're literally harming people everywhere around you. And just because you're harmed by someone doesn't make that person a narcissist, <laughs> right? That person hurts me. That person doesn't want to be with me. They, they're a narcissist. No, no, that's not the case. Not always. Sometimes it's just that they don't want to be with you. And that's got to be okay with you. That doesn't make them a bad person. But sometimes they have toxic traits and behaviors that you have got to guard yourself from. And the best thing to do is to walk away if you're not getting, if you're being harmed and you're not having a, a reciprocal exchange. You got to walk away to protect your precious energy 
because the malignant narcissist will try to grab hold of all of your energy at every opportunity. And so can a malignant narcissist be healed? No. And the reason is because, I mean, this is arguable, of course, but they don't have any insight. They won't admit that they're flawed. They think that they are perfect. So they don't have the ability to say, well, maybe there are some things I need to fix in myself because they can't possibly tolerate the emotion of any imperfection. They have to see themselves as perfect. They have to portray themselves as perfect and they can't bear for anyone to know the, of their imperfections. And that is with the classical narcissist. You also have the covert narcissist that will come to you as a wounded bird, willing to share with you negative aspects of themselves only to suck you in and suck the energy out of your life. You have to be careful for that. But there is a level of healthy narcissism and it is good to focus on your own internal experiences and setting boundaries rather than focusing on who another person is. Once you learn what that person is or how that person acts, then begin to recognize red flags and take action when you see the red flags that you know are, are signs that this person will never be someone that's nourishing, that I will only be experiencing pain from this relationship on down the road if I let it continue. Like right now, it may seem all rosy and good, but I know that those narcissists, they have, you know, the, the, the flip side. There's the rosy side, there's the, the good stage, and then there's the flip where you're discarded, where you're devalued, and then you're forgotten. And then, but, but here's the thing. If somebody has broken up with you, it doesn't make them a narcissist. Just because someone breaks up with you does not mean they're a narcissist. A narcissist has a pattern. They break up, then they bring you back. Then they break up, then they bring you back. Or they do things like just totally smear you to the whole world. Or try to get other people to hate you. Or try to discount you, your credibility. They try to smear you. They do smear campaigns. They play games. They constantly want to keep you in the game. Even if you're mad and angry, they don't care. They just want you always in their world so that you can be their fuel. Whereas somebody who's healthy is not going to even think twice about those things. They're just going to love their life and let God in their heart and enjoy this beautiful world. So be careful calling everybody a narcissist and really learn what it means and the different kinds. And maybe, you know, there's some of us who may need to, we may have narcissistic traits and narcissistic tendencies and narcissistic, like malignant narcissist ways of relating because that's all we've ever known. And if that is you and you also are, a, you know, an empath and somebody who can feel and can be authentic and can be vulnerable, then you can look inside of yourself and begin to make corrections in your behaviors, in these learned behaviors, so that you are learning to love people for who they are and not for, you know, alike, where you learn to accept people of, you know, people that are imperfect and you don't you know, gossip, you stop gossiping, you know, and you just become more real and less shallow. That can happen. You can, you can actually clean up narcissistic behaviors as you grow and heal. You know, lots of people, you know, if you're just trying to find a mate and all you care about is that they look like a model or they look like this, or they have this, or they drive this, or they have this kind of body, or they're you know, you're, you're really looking for that external trophy to make yourself feel good about yourself. That's kind of narcissistic, I've learned. Or someone else taught me that, you know, whenever you're looking for a, a partner and you're looking for somebody who's just like you, you want somebody just like you. 
I've been there, right? You think you want someone just like you, but that could be narcissistic. Like the whole key is letting people be who they are and loving them for who they are and allowing others to exist. A narcissist can't let anyone else exist. Everyone else exists for their own usage, pleasure. It's everyone else's fault. They take no responsibility. Whereas a healthy person learns to look within and learns to treat life like a pizza where you get to put whatever toppings that you want on your pizza. You can put pepperoni, you can put cheese, you can put olives, onions, peppers, or not. You can just have a cheese pizza. You can have whatever you want in your life and you really don't have to be so focused on who they are over there. Just don't let them get close to you. They can be there. And they can be a cool person for you to know way over there. But you don't have to let them in your heart. You don't want to relate with them on a one-to-one -one basis because that could be painful. And so be careful labeling others. And also healthy narcissism is a thing and it's okay. Okay? Until next time, this is Jenna Ryan signing off. Talk to you soon.